I needed two doves of my cake and wanted them as close as identical as I could possibly get them. So to make it easier to get them roughly the same size in body, I weighed two balls of gum paste to 26 gram each. I set one of the balls aside wrapped up in cling wrap and the other ball I rolled into a sausage about two and a half inches long. About a third of the way down, I rolled lightly between my fingers to give it an indentation which would represent the neck of the dove. Lightly pinch one side to give your head a beak. Down from the beak, use your finger to press into the underside of the neck to make the shape more prominent. You should now have a shape that sort of resembles a penguin. Lightly press onto the top of his head to remove the roundness and give his head a little more natural shape. We are now going to give him a stomach, look at the picture and note that it is only a very light indentation. So to make that stomach, lightly press your thumb halfway down the body. Pinch his bottom flat so we can later on add the tail. This is what it should look like after you have finished shaping it. Use a clean sharp scalpel blade and cut both sides to make a beak. Remember your blade should always be clean, this is what gives you a nice clean cut. On the upper side of a cut, lightly roll your blade all the way around until you reach a cut on the other side of his beak. From the same starting and finishing point, make another cut just up from the other one. We're now going to add his nostrils, if that's what they're called on a bird. Use a cake decorating tool or a matchstick will be fine and indent his two nostrils. Use the same tool and poke just up from his beak as illustrated in the photo. Use your scalpel again and continue the cut in his beak up until it reaches the indent that we just made. Use a boning tool and just up from the underside of his tail make a slight indentation for where his feet would be. If you are going to give him legs, now's the time to poke in two holes using a piece of wire where you'll later fix his legs. Mark where you're going to place his wings and press a piece of wire in to make two holes where each wing is eventually going to be fixed. Press a piece of wire into his bottom, approximately a centimetre in, in the direction of his head. Again, press a piece of wire into your bird, but this time work out where and on what angle you want your bird to sit on your cake or decoration first. The wires don't need to stay at this stage, but make sure you don't accidentally close over the holes. Using my clean, sharp scalpel blade, I have made small, light cuts over the bird's body. Continue these cuts until it's completely covered in feathers. Use a small balling tool or end of a paintbrush and lightly indent for an eye socket. Set your bodies aside for at least 24 hours to dry. You will find the wings and tail feather template on my Facebook page under a folder called YouTube. Print these out to the size that you need for your bird. Once you have printed out and adjusted the size of the template to the ratio that you need, trace it onto a piece of wax paper or tracing paper. Use your preferred product, in this case I use satinized gum paste. Roll a piece out very thin onto a non-stick board. Place your trace template onto your rolled out gum paste and lightly scribe onto it. You'll find that once you have removed your template, it has indented your gum paste but not made a cut. Use a clean, sharp scalpel blade and cut your feathers out. Remove the excess gum paste and now place your feathers in a Ziploc bag to stop them from drying out. Now we're going to make the feather that said wired on your template. Place a small amount of gum paste onto a cell board over one of your channels and roll out very thinly. 
Use your template to cut out this feather or do it freehand. Again, place in a Ziploc bag to stop it from drying out. I've used the feather veiner purchased from Squire's Kitchen. Lightly dust both sides of your feather veiner with corn flour to stop it from sticking. Place one of your cut out feathers onto the veiner. Put the top veiner on and press down firmly. You will need to vein all your feathers in the same way. For the feather that said wide, lightly dampen your wire with sugar, glue or water. Wipe it onto the back of your hand to remove the excess and then guide the wire into your feather. Take your finished wing template out and add the first two feathers, gluing them together with a little bit of royal icing. Again with royal icing, fix down your wide feather. This is the part that we use to fix your wing to your bird. Using royal icing again, build up the last of your feathers. Continue using royal icing and glue down your feathers until it looks the same as the template. Either make a mirror image of your wing template or flip your template over and use the underside to make your wing. But remember, your other wing has to be a mirror image. It cannot be the same. Put your wings to the side and allow them to completely dry too. Either dry them completely flat or put them over some paper towel to give them movement. Roll out some more gum paste very thinly and with exactly the same scribing technique, scribe and then cut out your tail feathers. Also remember the one that says wired, place onto your sailboard and add a piece of wire. Using your finished tail template, again build up the feathers using royal icing to glue them together in the same technique as what we did for the wing feathers. Once they are finished, set aside to completely dry. Either dry them flat or again over paper towel to give them movement. Once everything is completely dry, add a dob of royal icing to his bottom. Make sure though that you still know where the hole is. Take his dried tail feather and press the wire into the hole that we made earlier. If need be, add a little more royal icing and set it aside until it is completely dried. I forgot to mention roughly where my thumb is, the piece of wire in the wing will need to be bent into an L shape so you can press it into the bird's body. Add a bit of royal icing where we made the holes for the wings to go and add the wing feathers in exactly the same way as we added the tail feathers. Again use more royal icing if you need to and set them aside to completely dry. You will definitely find it easier to do one wing at a time and make sure it's completely dry before you go on to the next one. If you don't wait, when you pick them up, the wings will turn, spin, fall down, twist. Patience is definitely a virtue. If you want to speed the process up, put them in your oven with only the light on. Or if you have a defrost cycle, that works great. But make sure that no one turns your oven on while they're sitting in there. You also may find that you might need to prop the wings up with some paper tissue. Now roll up two balls in equal size for the eyes with a little bit of water on a paintbrush stick in place. When they're completely dry, I painted the outside orange with an edible marker and the inside black. This amazing tip was given to me by Jacinta of Cadacity and lucky for you she gave me permission to pass it on. If you haven't seen Jacinta's work, honestly, go to Cadacity on Facebook and check it out. Her work is second to none. It would also be lovely if you left her a note saying thank you for this life-changing cake decorating tip. So this is Jacinta's amazing hint. To make any cracks, gaps or seams look seamless, take a small piece of gum paste and add water and mix until you make a thick plaster-like consistency. Using a paintbrush or whatever works best for you, pick out some of the paste and add to the cracks, gaps or whatever seams that you need hidden. Like me, you may find it easier to only add a little bit of paste, allow it to dry and then start adding some more until you have slowly built the paste up.
keep adding until your joins are seamless. Congratulations, you've made your first dub, and I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I enjoyed making it for you. When you're ready to use your doves, add the pieces of wire back into the holes we made on the underside of the belly. Again, fix the wire into place with raw icing and allow to dry. Remember never to put wire directly into a cake. If you are using these doves to go into a cake, then press a straw into your cake. Fill with raw icing and then put the wire into the straw.